Well, since the weather's cleared up a little bit and uh, my back is no longer sore, I figured I gotta start picking away at this Argo again now. So now that I've got all the bearings done for the wheels and for the idler shafts, um, there's three other problems I'd like to tackle before we go anywhere. And in no particular order, they are the electrical system, which needs to be looked at because I'm not sure if it's charging uh, and it doesn't shut off with the key right now. We also have to do uh, the brakes because whatever's in there is not braking fluid. And the third thing we need to take care of is the way that the, um, the drive belt rubs against this guy here, which is just a shield for the exhaust. Um, and we'll do engine oil and a few other things first or as well, but uh, those are the main things I want to work at today. So unfortunately these master cylinders are kind of hard to film, um, but I've got the top, the top taken off them now. And um, you can see what used to be brake fluid inside of them. This one is green, which that's interesting. I have seen that before, but this one is kind of black and green, it looks snotty almost. That I haven't seen before. I don't know if that has something to do with uh, maybe somebody mixing types of brake fluid. But either way, we're going to get those pumped out. So this is the brake fluid for the Argo. Um, it's dot five, the silicone stuff. It requests that specifically, and I've heard some stories on forums of uh, people having issues if they put in dot three or dot four. Uh, so I did buy this, but unfortunately, these two bottles, which is less than a liter, I think, was uh, <laughs> over $50. So to actually do the bleeding, my plan is just to use this little suction bleeder here. Uh, these in two pieces. And I'm going to throw him onto the bleeder screw for this one and then that guy. And we're just going to suck the fluid out. And then I'm going to do just a little bit of a flush here. I've got some dot three. Um, since the dot five is really expensive, I don't want to flush it with that. So I'll just chase it a little bit with this to clear it out. And uh, once it starts coming out clear, then we'll put the new stuff in. So right beside my garage here, actually cutting it in half, is a woodwork shot um, built onto it, uh, which my wife likes to use to... Uh, Make signs and other crappy things. But as soon as she hears me mention brakes, she's out of there. That's what just happened a minute ago. I think she's terrified I'm going to make her hold the brake pedal on me. Well, I took a little bit of fandangling around with loose connections to actually get that all pumped out. If we take a look inside, you can see that cylinder is empty and reasonably clean too. I dabbed it with a, a paper towel and I didn't see any little foreign objects or anything on there. Um, so, now we'll fill it up with the new stuff, um, run it through, and hopefully we will have nice brakes for our test drive. And like I said earlier there, I'm going to give this a little tiny bit of a flush with that tree. Um, just to get some like gunk out of there. And once it runs a little more clear, we'll put the dot five back in. So I've actually mostly emptied that top cylinder again. Um, if we take a look at the fluid coming out of that uh, bleed hole there, it's still pretty milky. Um, that might look like air bubbles on the camera, but it's not air bubbles. It's actually, uh, well, I'm not going to call it brake fluid, but it's what used to be brake fluid. So I'll keep pumping at that and bring us back for the next one. So there's our master cylinder. You can see that it's all emptied full of dot three brake fluid, which means it has gone through that line there. Uh, and into the uh, into the brake caliper and flushed all out completely so there's no more of that gunky old brake fluid in there. Now all it's left to do is to put in our dot five to get rid of the dot three um, and that should be this side done. Um, and as a note I know that when I'm uh, when I was showing this I'm just hauling on the handle and you're seeing air bubbles and stuff come out. That's just because it's easier to film it that way um, but when the camera's off I am uh, pumping it through normally and we'll make sure there's no air bubbles in when we're all done. Now, there's a surprise I wasn't expecting. I'd never used a clean flow dot five before. And I was pretty surprised to see that when I put it in, it's actually purple. Well, isn't that gonna make bleeding easier? Huh. 
All right, so I got both of those cylinders bled out now. You can see there's nice, fresh, purple fluid in there. Um, I still don't really trust it. I might bleed it out again after like a year or so, just to get any residuals out. That fluid was uh, was really nasty. And I made a little discovery while I was testing on the brakes. See, I cleaned up both of these calipers there, and notice that they are not the same, which I should have noticed before, because if you look at the heads, this guy's got hex bolts, that guy does not. So uh, one of those isn't original. I'm guessing the one on the right, because it's shinier, is probably the replacement, and the one on the left likely is original. And to kind of further corroborate that, um, yeah, you can't see it with the lighting there, but there's nice new brake pads on this one. So at one point, that caliber has been replaced, um, which is fine. Uh, it doesn't bother me at all. You can see that the brakes are very stiff now, right away. Much better than before. Um, so yeah, now we can move on to the next thing, which is the battery. It was right there. So I've already replaced him um, earlier off camera. I put new posts on him as well. Um, but I like to test the I like to test the charging system because when I first got it, it had this battery in it, which was a brand new replacement. Um, and the guy said it kept going flat. So this battery is really too small for this Argo. Um, so we'll see if that maybe has something to do with it, or maybe he just let it go flat one too many times. But I'm going to turn it on, and then we're going to um, test the voltage. Okay, so we'll do a little bit of a test here with the Argo in the run position, but not actually on. And we see that he is sitting right around 12 volts. It's actually lower than I would have thought. Well, that's a little bit unfortunate. It looks like right now um, we do, in fact, have a charging issue. Wasn't what I wanted to see, but it's not the end of the world to fix. Mostly just another part to wait on. So it's been a few days since I've done any filming on this unit. Um, unfortunately, there's just not a whole lot of room in here to have a camera and me working at the same time. Um, but I have good news about this regulator rectifier. When I first saw it and I noticed that the battery wasn't charging, I just assumed that it was fried. And I think so did the previous owner, because this isn't the original one. This is a replacement. Um, now if you look here, you can see the three uh, posts there, and I owned, or not owned, no, no, I checked them for voltage while it was running, and it wasn't putting out any voltage at all, so I actually just assumed that this was fried. But I did a little bit more checking around, and I'm glad I did. So if we follow these very ratty tatty leads, coming off of that uh, regulator rectifier, we'll find the fuse block, which is right here. And this guy right there, where there's no fuse at at all right now. Uh, so that's where there should be a fuse, uh, and there was a fuse in there originally. He's the regulator rectifier fuse, and that guy is right here. So you may notice that this fuse has no cap on him, and when I took him out, he did have a cap on, but the cap was pretty loose, and it was obvious that this was a bad fuse, um, so I needed another one. And I didn't have one hanging around, but I actually found another fuse, which was in good shape. It's not rated for the same amperage. It's quite a small fuse. I think this one is uh, 10 amps maybe and should be 15 or maybe even 30. Anyway, so I plopped him in into the same spot I got the other guy out from and tried the charging system again and it did not work still. It didn't work. Uh, so when I put that new fuse in it and it didn't work, um, I decided to ohm it out again and I discovered that there is no continuity between these lower jaws here and these upper jaws on that same fuse holder. Um, no matter what I did, I could not get continuity, tried other fuses as well, no luck at all. So I'm not sure exactly what's broken, because um, it used to be this wire that connected up top, uh, but no matter what I did, I could not get continuity. So what I tried doing was just bypass the fuse altogether, take the hot lead, put them right on the lower jaws, and lo and behold, when I turn it on, now I have voltage. So now I know that I have an Argo that's capable of charging its own battery and won't just die on me on the trail. 
um, I can get to checking the rest of those connections. I don't think I'm going to show that. I've already owned most of the node and I know they work. And I do plan on cleaning them up in the future. Uh, and of course, I am going to move this guy over to one of the unoccupied posts and put a fuse in him as well. Um, but right now, that's not my concern. My main concern is, as we saw earlier, the Argo doesn't actually shut itself off under its own power. So underneath this bundle of wires here is the back of our ignition. And you can see that some of these wires, uh, noticeably this guy here and uh, one just above them, are either completely detached or mostly detached. So I'm going to try, hopefully with the solder gun, I'll give you a little bit of a better view, and reattach those. Um, I'll be honest and say that I'm pretty useless with a solder gun. It's just uh, not a talent of mine. Um, but if I can glob something on there and get it to work, then that's great. And uh, if all else fails, then I can just buy another ignition for it. So right there is the back of the ignition. You can see the two points up in the top right there where I have soldered them back together. And um, there's actually two wires that had broken. So I'm glad that I caught that. I was hoping that I could weld them up, or uh, sorry, solder them up while they were still in the machine, but uh, it was kicked back more than 90 degrees, and that wasn't quite going to happen. Now, it's not the best soldering job, but I'm just not the best solderer. I would like to start it right now, but unfortunately, uh, there's somebody staying up above my garage, so I can't turn it on because of the reek of the gas. Um, so for me, I can't test this for until tomorrow. For you guys, that should be right now. All right, well, it's the next morning for me. Uh, I'm going to turn this key over, and we're going to see if she turns on, and more importantly, if it turns off. Successful. Well, hopefully you just saw a video of the Argo starting up and then shutting off by the key. Um, if not, that kind of sucks for me. Uh, but next, we're going to drain this transmission, and I'm pretty certain that's a drain plug right there. Um, I had to take the floor pan out because the floor pan had a, had a slot that came up and blocked that guy off. So I'm going to hold a Gatorade next to him when I open it up, and hopefully I can catch most of what comes out, because otherwise it looks like it's going to run underneath the transmission there. Uh, and that's going to be an oily mess to deal with, so we'll see how that goes. All right, well, slight change of plan. I decided to use the sorbent pad here to hopefully deflect the uh, oil as it comes out and just to run into an oil pan. That way I can let it sit overnight because I uh, suspect that this cold transmission fluid is going to take quite a while to drain out of there. Well, at least it's not on there too tight. See what comes out. Hopefully this doesn't ruin my night. Yeah, that's definitely pretty shiny. But it's an old gear case, so it's not the end of the world. All right, so that's the transmission fluid after drain for the day. Um, I'm picking up a lot of the ceiling here on the camera. It's not really quite as bad as it looks, but it's still way more metallic than I'd like. So I'm going to put that drain plug back in, and then I'm going to throw in some of this, which is the replacement for the old Hypo RAC stuff. It's got the same product number on it. Um, so yeah, hopefully it holds up. So I've got the transmission filled up now. It took exactly one bottle uh, of this stuff, which is uh, about 900 milliliters. And the last fluid we have to change, other than um, lubricating those chains, is we have to do the engine oil. Now the drain on this is right at the bottom of the motor and uh, there's no way really to get to it or to drain it out without making it a huge mess or pulling the engine. Um, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to undo that cap and I'm going to use this suction device here to suck the old motor oil out um, and then I'll just fill it the same way. So when it comes to motor oil on this machine, the user manual recommends a few different types. Um, if you're under zero degrees Celsius or whatever, 32 Fahrenheit or so, um, then it wants uh, 530 or uh, 1030 multi-viscosity oil. But if you're above freezing, 
then it wants just straight 30 weight oil. Um, I don't know if I'm just going to run straight 30 weight oil in it ever, to be honest. I feel like that's uh, that's pretty dated, but it is what the motor asked for. But right now it's usually still below zero outside. So we're going to put some of this in. I'm probably going to do this oil again after my first run or two also anyway, just to clear it out. I know you probably can't see that on the wide angle lens right now, but I'm just a hair beneath the full line, which is perfect. I'll take that funnel out of there, um, run it, let the oil pressure circulate around a little bit and just make sure that's actually where I'm at. Um, but yeah, looks like for once I might've got on the first try. All right, I think next up we're gonna take care of these spark plugs. Um, I've already pulled one out and if we can focus, that guy is black very black um you know new one for comparison so that's that's pretty typical um it was running super rich still is running super rich actually um so those plugs are i think a little bit fouled feels like every now and again she sort of wants to sputter a little bit at low rpm um so i'm gonna do the plugs and uh next up i think will be chains after that I may have to chase those threads a little bit. They look okay on this guy. This is the old spark plug, but the uh, new one, for some reason, won't even try to start. Hmm, that's a pain. I'll bring it back when that's done. So as you can probably see, it's a beautiful day outside right now. And I'd kind of like to be able to at least poke the Argo outside a little bit today. Um, and maybe if I'm lucky, have it ready for a, a quick run down a path tomorrow. So there's only really two things preventing this. The first of which is that this heat shield here um, rubs up against the belt when it sags down. You can see I can kind of move him. Um, so I gotta find a way of pinning him up. And the other issue we have to deal with are these tires. So if I take a look at the tires, that guy in the back there is taller than the one uh, in the middle, who's about the same size as the one beside him who is smaller than the one up front. So none of these tires are the same size, and that's because they run at such low tire pressure that even a little bit of pressure makes a big difference in size. Also, this guy in the center frame, he's technically a different size altogether. Um, so that's quite an issue when you have a chain drive, but I'll talk about that after we fix the exhaust. Unfortunately, I am not joking. Do I suck at getting content out here or what? Anyway, everything you just saw was filmed in March of this year, but it's now August, and in that time, a lot has went down to this machine to bring it back to being almost new condition. I'll probably just make an update video sometime soon, uh, going over the new improvements in a better format, one with maybe a little less rambling and a little more actually getting work done. There's a lot to cover, everything from clutch modification to carb work, bilge pumps to tires, and everything in between. In the meantime though, I'll leave you with some much overdue footage of the Argo on its first two test drives with my wife. These shots of the Argo in action were taken just after the earlier footage was filmed, so it still had a way to go at this point, but just being able to drive it around after spending so much time and money on it felt like a huge victory to me. If you've made it this far through this mess of a video, then I appreciate that. Like I said earlier, I do plan on changing my video format going forward to hopefully be a little more palatable, but since I had made this in March, I just let it be. I hope to have another video update out soon, and I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.